uh, exercise is the answer. Uh, it, it alleviates 95% of all your, all your issues, both physically and mentally and emotionally. I've always kind of had the thought that it's very possible that people with disabilities want to get into fitness and working out, but might feel, what the heck, what do I do? Like this space isn't for me, although it is for you, it's for anybody. And so we wanted to bring these two guys in to offer encouragement and knowledge and answer any questions you have. So let's open the floor. After the this pandemic thing and stuff opens up again, I feel like I'm not gonna be wanting to like jump into the gym right away. And what you're what you're hitting on here is actually the, the biggest piece of exercising as a whole for anyone, but especially those of us in, in the disabled community, you have to do what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable going to the gyms right away when they first open, then you can stay home. Now, if you wanna exercise while you're at home, that's fine. Now, if you're not even, like right now, you know, again, with everything going on, people are adjusting to what their temporary normal is. So that could be exercising, that could be self-development. You know what? That could also be binge watching Tiger King on next Netflix. What what coaches are and what trainers are, we're not people. You don't you don't pay us uh, for our expertise, um, and and because anybody can actually go work out. The reason why you pay us is because of we keep you honest and we keep you on the right path. In terms of in terms of the fear, uh, it's it's substantiated, but. And you're more, you're not wrong to be afraid of walking into a gym because you're afraid of getting coronavirus. But there's always other risks that come with walking into a gym outside of, that are to most public people that are unknown um, than, than just the coronavirus. That's a good point. So, so take that into consideration that it's a perspective. It, it gives you a bigger, wider perspective. And this is the thing is that we live in a world where there are all these unknowns and people, because they're not out there, people forget about them. So, so I guess think, what you're trying to say is put everything in perspective. Yes. Very much so. For Daryl, what type of music do you listen to when you're working out? Because I know I listen to country music. The uh, the cool thing about uh, Spotify is you just I, I mean like and all these streaming services is you can make your own. So I listen to a little bit of everything, uh, but I'm uh, we'll we'll just say early two thousands pop right now. I do like to listen to rap like Missy Elliott and yeah. stuff. Nice, Priya. <laughs> Music that has a really fast beat, so I can because and then I guess I'll veer into my question. I'm trying to get more cardio. Like the state of North Carolina actually helped me purchase this thing called a standard. Um, the standard puts you in a standing position, which is really great because all these muscles and stuff that get tight from sitting all the time, you can stretch it. And I do that for an hour uh, and then I like to get cardio. So really that's what I'm trying to do is get more cardio into my exercise program. So. I think that the only way uh, for for something like the, uh, the the machine is to just intensify the resistance and try to do that. Um, if you're looking for a more rigorous uh, cardio, uh, obviously um, there's other not obviously sorry. Um, there's other methods of getting uh, higher intensity cardio, such as you know as everybody knows, uh, hit training. You know, it was the uh, it was hit hit training uh, H I I T. Uh, high intensity interval training that was uh that's the, been the big craze for the past uh what eight years probably Five, eight years. yeah yeah it's all about developing a uh, a progressive a progressive uh r routine to the point where you can actually uh, utilize your upper body to generate that kind of um to create that kind of result you have to literally fail uh like a thousand times before you get that first push-up or that first workout that feels like a wor workout that you're looking for 
if we're if we're talking about cardio and mostly upper body, um, shadow boxing is a good one if you don't have any kind of like punching bag to go with. If you had access to a pool and could swim, um, because that is actually a lot better for you than um, the machine because uh, with the specificity and the neuropathy, um, it'll actually help alleviate a lot of that, um, the, the tension that exists. There's so much, like from what you were saying, okay, you're doing stretches in bed, you're wanting upper body cardio. And like you said, you kind of made up your own routine on the stretches. This can be done on the cardio, but it's it's about going back and forth with one what's available to you in the moment, and you know really into what Sam was saying, really gradually work on that progression. So that will definitely be something that's going to happen as far as individual conversation with with either one of us or maybe both of us. Who knows? But um, yeah, you guys can can definitely message me on Instagram is going to be the easiest one, and that's going to be at your level fitness. Um, so, but yeah, any questions that you guys have, just send them that way. Uh, or if you want to email me, it's, it's Daryl, it's D-A-R-Y-L at your level fitness. So you guys can reach me in 8,000 different places, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> uh, all oh. through my DMs. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, I believe that, uh, strength training is the only way and the best way to train. It's been proven to show that it gives longevity to your life. In the time of quarantine right now, there's ways to strength train that you probably don't know you could do in your own house. Mm -hmm. uh, creating resistance is, creating mm -hmm. external resistance mm -hmm. is actually um, something you can do without you even knowing. Uh, whether, and so it's, it could be as easy as grabbing a hydro flask filling it up with water and then shaking it around like a, a shake weight. Um, there's different ways. Uh, you know, you can you can do tempos, you know, really slow push-ups. Uh, you can use your chair, you can use your uh, your couch as a as a way to step up and step up, step down to if you ha if you're not wheelchair bound. If you are wheelchair bound, I would say that your focus should be 100% on your upper body. Managing the pain is, is one of those things where it can be alleviated through strength training. Exercise is the answer. And if you hate exercising, then I have, I mean, you got big pharma there to help you out. Um, <laughs> in terms, in terms of, in terms of, if you don't, if you, if you don't want to go that route, exercise is, is the, is the route that will, you know, make you a happier person, make you uh, more tolerable. Um, to other people. <laughs> More uh, it takes the edge off. That's like, you know, it'll make you, it'll, it, it'll get you a place where you're pain free. Um, I'm actually a group fitness instructor and my degree is in kinesiology. Um, right now my focus is aerobic training. So like all cardio, um, but I'm running virtual classes on Facebook. So I teach cardio dance fitness, um, but my my Facebook itself is kind of like supposed to be like a mecca of fitness for all abilities. So I welcome people to join in. My question for Sam and Daryl is, you know, whether you can pass or, you know, how do you deal with that stigma of going into a gym and being a person with a disability and also being in the fitness world. That's the first one. The second one is how do you deal with atrophy? What is the best way to deal with chronic pain? As far as dealing with the stairs and the uneasiness when you walk into a gym, this gets back to like, you know, oh. knowing who you are and being comfortable in your own skin. But by the way, okay, so like I, I, I can tell you on the story that part of what got me into the fitness industry is like, hey, I noticed people were staring at me when I would work out. This is an industry where people like to get attention. I have an advantage, okay? You can look at it that way. That being said, <laughs> when I'm in a gym, when I'm okay. in a gym and people are, you know, watching me do leg exercises, when people are still kind of scare, like either staring or kind of giving like, like, you know, one of those really uncomfortable 
looks at you, um, mm -hmm. it still gets you. I, I mean, but I, I think the thing whenever you're in your inside your own head is you try to like, you, you just try to, to handle it as best you can. You're going to have days where it, it bothers you and you're going to have other days where you're able to actually like own who it is that you are. Um, as far as the is atrophy, and this is kind of like when you're working out in general. And for those of us that have CP, your body, if you're able to exercise and you are able to adapt whatever moves to what you're able to do, um, you're still going to have atrophy. But you're also going to have other areas of your of your of your body that are more developed just by default. For instance, Erin, because when she's out doing her walks, she has really really strong muscular arms. Like most, you know, like the bat wings and stuff that you'll hear women talk about every so often. Sam's demonstrating. Like yeah. you, she Aww. will she will never have that because she's got these really defined triceps. So part of it is also you, like yeah. working. Like some of some of this is also looking at the body that you have, and and being able to try and embrace it again, like lifelong thing. Fitness industry as a whole will will try to tell you that if you do this, if you do this, you're going to feel better about yourself. Um, you have to embrace who you are, but, but at the same time, embracing who you are, you still can have those thoughts of I want to be stronger. I want to be you, you know I want to be more athletic. Now, and that actually leads into your third question, which is, you know, convincing people to do stuff that they really don't want to do is is going to be a losing battle. So like those of you that are are side hustlers, you probably don't spend a lot of time trying to sell the people that aren't interested. Like if somebody tells you I'm not into that, then you're like, OK, cool. And you go on to the next conversation. You keep that conversation open. So, you know, my hope for, for those of you guys that like, if you're saying I'm in pain all the time, I don't like, I, I just, I'm not into this right now. And Sam and I, like, we could all tell you that, you know what, your body will feel better once you start moving. You will feel stronger. I mean, guys, if you're able to do strength training, it, it really does start to, you start to feel stronger relatively quickly and same with your endurance training and your flexibility training i mean you'll notice the first few times you do it it's going to be painful it's going to be awful but the more you do it the better you're going to feel but at the same time you have to be ready to start that process on your own so like if you're kind of if you're on the fence over here where you're like yeah i want to exercise i'm super excited about it and then you've got the other side other end of the fence where it's like I don't really want any of this right now. Um, you know, first off, for each of you guys, like email, my email and my DM is always open. We can always have a one-on-one -on -one combo about this stuff. But for those of you that are kind of like in the middle, like I, I feel pain, but I, I want to try this. I've tried in the past maybe, and I haven't been able to get exactly to where I want to be. Like if you're on the fence, just, just go out and try it. First one, um, how do you deal with Sigma? Uh, I know this is a cop-out answer, uh, but... If you know who I am, you know my personality. Don't give a fuck about other people. Um, <laughs> uh, just to go into the gym, do your thing, keep your head down. I mean, there's always a phrase. There's always a phrase that we use in the in the world of weightlifting, which is uh, for some of these people, they say um, head down, eyes up, and that's basically the attitude that I have. Second part was about the atrophy. It's all about strength training. Strength training is the answer. Um, in terms of in terms of atrophy, in, in the science aspect, atrophy means the degradation of muscle mass. Um, the opposite of that is what we what everybody says is hypertrophy. Uh, hypertrophy is basically increasing the size of your muscle, right? Because when you look at yeah. the bi uh, a muscular biopsy, if you do a muscular biopsy, um, you don't grow new muscle cells. You basically are born with what you have, and you and hypertrophy is actually taking those muscles and making them bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's how you get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, atrophy is the opposite of that. After you don't use them over time, you're going to lose because of the way our body likes to adapt to what's more economically, uh, energetic, economically efficient. Uh, if you're not strength training, you're not going to need all that extra muscle mass to move all that weight around. So it's going to start atrophying. So 
and and the other opposite of it is if you have a disability such as ma- majority of our group here who are wheelchair bound um if you if you look at your legs and you're like man my legs are a little little looking a little too small um that's going to happen that's the life you're going to end up living anyways but to mitigate that there are things that you can do like physical therapy you can have um you can even have uh if you have a significant other or lucky enough to have a significant other uh put ankle weights on around your arm, around your legs and use those ankle weights and and again if you don't have functioning limbs um you have your 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 significant other partner or whatever you move those uh limbs that for you with ankle weights and that'll be enough for that kind of change uh strength training is all about is strength training is about stress management whatever your body doesn't use it's going to get rid of so in terms of strength training when you use something like a dumbbell or a kettlebell or an ankle weight it's going to you're going to mitigate you're going to fight that so your body's going to adapt to whatever stress is going under right and so you just find so basically the goal is to continually add weight so over time you get bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger the last one about chronic um uh, chronic pain management um when you're in pain the number one worst thing you could do is to stay still and that's that's what atrophy is is when you stay still so being inactive so the opposite of that is 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 moving and moving whatever you whatever you can so in order to mitigate chronic pain you have to move your body um and that's again like i said exercise is always the answer unless you want to go to big pharma i mean i have to tell you exercise has been the best thing for me we need to be moving our bodies too especially we're dealing with chronic pain we're dealing with a lot of issues yeah part of this country. We need to be moving our bodies more than other people really. 100%. <laughs>